There we go. Oh, God. Thomas. Nelson. What are you going to do? Oh, nice. Top right corner. Great from their goalkeeper then. Barrios. Second off him. Oh, nice. And Ketty. Oh, God. Straight through to Martinelli. Lovely pass and lovely, uh, lovely snatch of the ball. Martinelli all by himself. Take him on. Take him on. No. Yeah. No. Oh, here we go. And Tom Potton right corner. And then Herrera, Florenzi over the top two. Mbappe, he is playing on the right-hand side, not as a striker. Is he going to score swinging in? No, straight to Keane. Nice goal, Keane. And then Florenzi once again. The guy that starts everything. Oh, nice pass straight to Draxler. Left-hand side, in you go. Would say first time, but Keane got the rebound. And then where's it going? Take it off him. There we go. Danilo, Rafina. Straight to Bernat, all right then. There we go. <laughs> nice goal for the left back. How are we doing everyone? Tucker Jobs and this is Tactic Testing. Obviously, welcome back. You've seen many of my videos before. And this tactic is the Crazy 442 Upgrade by Crompton FM. All right, it can be found on my Discord. I don't think there's a download link anywhere else. If there is, it may be uploaded at a later date but there is a steam um link so obviously if you're playing through steam you can subscribe to him and get the tactic that way obviously that link will also be in the description um so let's get on with the tactic as you can see it looks like it could have originally been a nap tactic just for the pure fact on this tactical style where it says custom till pass it tick attacker normally naps uh, most of naps tactics have all got that in there a lot of people are using them as like a base style then changing them heavily to suit their needs and, and this is probably one of them um, the teams taking part in the test then, Arsenal, Sheffield United, PSG, Strasbourg, Barcelona, Vigo, uh, Blackburn, Fleetwood and Port Vale. Uh, so let's get on with the tactic then. So if you can't download it, just follow all these instructions guys. Advance forward left, advance forward right, inverted winger left, inverted winger right, deep line playmaker left, box to box midfielder, wing back left, wing back right. Ball playing defender left, central defender right, and the sweeper keeper. Uh, set piece instructions corners, defending right and left, and attacking left and right with the uh, taker aiming for the near post, and then free kicks, defending right, left, and attacking left and right, and that's a, a mixed for the taker. And then small chance of shot, right and left, which is also mixed, wide, left and right. And then indirect deep, right and left. And all the takers, player instructions is obviously just mixed. It's not short, it's not long. Uh, they just vary. And then if we go to throw-ins, defending right and left. And attacking left and right. And as you can see, it's the defender right and left. Both taking the throw-ins, both uh, doing it long as well. So back to the tactic. It's uh, tactical styles, obviously nappish, all right? So it's, it's got to be in that one uh, originally anyway. So props to both of them. Props to both of them. Uh, mentality is positive. In possession, fairly wide attack and worth with passing space, overlapping left and right. Focus play down the left and right. So it's a wing style tactic, if you like that kind of tactic. And with you focusing down the left and right, obviously you're focusing more with your left backs, right backs. That's why Burnett did all, Burnett did all right in the highlights. So Florenzi as well getting involved quite a lot. Uh, as well as the inverted wing backs, uh, inverted winger, sorry, on the right and left. If you're focusing more on there, they're going to cut in and hopefully do a lot of damage. And then play out defence as well. Shorter passing directness with a higher tempo, so short passing fast football. Uh, low crosses in the final third, with work ball into box and run at the defence. In transition, counter press and counter with your uh, goalkeeper's dis um, instructions to uh, distribute to your fullbacks. And then out of possession, use offside trap with a higher line of engagement, higher defensive line with standard defensive width, extremely urgent pressing intensity with prevent short goalkeeper distribution, and the get stuck in instruction is on guys so uh yeah if you're interested in the types of players that may fit the roles or the tactic just pick best 11 and it'll give you a small idea and then obviously change to uh change what you would prefer because as you can see or, or what i was 
I'll tell you is that on the test, Aubameyang played a couple of times on the left-hand side because that's just how the assistant manager uh, put them on certain games as well as like Mbappe for PSG. He doesn't always play up front. He plays on the right-hand side. If he was locked in and went up front, he would definitely score a lot more goals. But I can't control what the assistant manager does unless I lock in the players themselves, which I don't really like doing because it stops the fact that you use, you're use you not going to be using rotation, which in your real games, you would do. Um, so let's get on with the tactic and I'll see you at the end of the season for all the results. Right then, welcome back everybody. So Arsenal and Sheffield United are the first teams we're going to come to and Arsenal came first. All right, so you can't moan at the fact that Arsenal coming uh, first in the Premier League is, uh, is, is fantastic basically. And then Sheffield United are the underdogs in this test and uh, the predicted 14th, right, they came 8th. So even though they didn't qualify for any European competitions, uh, come in the top 7 or top 4, obviously some tactics can do that. If I do another test, they could break into the top 7 and quali qualify for European football. 8th place is still amazing for Sheffield United. At the end of the day, one point was in it. If they had one point, they probably would have qualified for European football. But let's have a look at the top threes then. Bamiyan, McGoldrick and Lacazette all coming first, second and third uh, with goals. And obviously all the players belonging to both Arsenal and Sheffield United. Uh, average rating, you got Odegaard coming third there with 7.41. Assists, Odegaard again with 15 assists. And player of the matches all belongs to Bamiyan with uh, 10 uh, for him. No clean sheets for any of the goalkeepers for both teams. So let's start off with Arsenal's competitions then. So... English FA Cup runners up. Unfortunately, lost out to Manchester United 2 1. Euro Cup, they were knocked out in the quarterfinals by AC Milan. Carabao Cup quarterfinals again by Man City. And they're the runners up of the Community Shield. Unfortunately, losing out to Liverpool. Liverpool are a great team. So, even though they won the league, they just struggled to get any other silverware. And uh, it's a shame, but cup competitions are very random, especially when you're doing testing. It can be a, it can be hard to win everything unless you're very overpowered. And we know Arsenal can sometimes have some trouble uh, when playing the game obviously when doing tests and in this case they actually did very well to actually win the league so I'm not too fussed about that uh, if we go to the squad then how did the squad do with the tactic with the average ratings not too bad your best player was actually Odegaard uh, it was 7.44 one goal and 24 assists nice biggest goal scorers Aubameyang, Lacazette, Nketiah, Nelson uh, and Pepe all right 12, 14, 23, 30, 43 all right nice uh, a nice amount of goals basically by varied a varied amount of players. Uh, biggest creators in your team after Odegaard, you've got Pepe, Saka, Nelson, Aubameyang, Willian, Lacazette, all getting some decent numbers there. Obviously, double digits from Willian upwards. Uh, team report, let's have a look at the... Uh general performance not doing too bad obviously Arsenal are a good team they do have a good attacking force as well so goals per game is decent expected goals and shots all good um, conceding less than one a game as well which is excellent and if we go to stats the full numbers was 171 goals which is fantastic all right you can't moan at that it's very good and then 62 conceded a little on the high side um, because they are they basically conceded more than they played um, in, it's not bad bad but it would be nice, obviously, just to sort out that back line. Bring those goals conceded down a little bit. Maybe into the early 50s, late 40s is always a really good indication of a good defensive tactic. Um, but 62 is not bad. It's just not the best either. Uh, so, yeah. Nice one, Arsenal. At the end of the day, they won the league. End of the day, they won the league. Um, so let's go to the underdog, Sheffield United. We know where they finished. Eighth place is nothing to moan about for Sheffield United. Uh, well done to them. Uh, in their competitions, then FA Cup semi-final, which ain't too bad, and quarter-final in the Carabao Cup. So they actually got pretty far in the uh, cup competition or domestic competitions in, in England. So I, I, don't, I think that's I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. Uh, squad, how did the squad do with the tactic then? Best player was Ramsdale, which is obviously your goalkeeper. So if your goalkeeper is the one getting the best ratings, your players have to look at themselves and think, hang on, hang on, something's, something's up. Uh, Baldock then uh, was after him with 12 assists, 7.12. Biggest goal scorers, uh, Mousset and McGoldrick, 27-27. You got Brewster there with 11, and then McBurney with 10. Biggest creator in your team, John Fleck. John Fleck, I used to always buy him years ago. Uh, then Mousset with 12, obviously, after Flex 14, and then Baldock with 12. Uh, McBurney with 11 as well. So, uh, team report, let's have a look. It's 
it's not bad. You're in the Premier League, don't forget. A lot of strong teams in the Premier League. So conceding per game with the players that you've got, even though you've got a great goalkeeper, I think Ramsdale's a brilliant goalkeeper, um, your back line is still obviously weaker than a lot of the competition in the same league. So yeah, conceded per game is not bad. You're not the worst and you're just, just probably above middle when it comes to averages so that's not too bad goals per game obviously is still pretty high we expected goals and shots as well uh for uh, stats sorry is 102 not bad for the underdogs guys uh, 82 is high is yeah for yeah it's very high <laughs> um but you are underdogs all right you're gonna come against some teams when you come against liverpool man cities they're gonna get quite a few goals against you and it's unfortunate all right, unless you obviously change the tactic yourself whilst you are playing the tactic. Don't forget, this is a simulated tactic test. So if I was playing it, yeah, big teams would drop the uh, fast passing down or you would um, not pass into space or you would obviously drop into positive or balanced mentality. Stuff like that can always obviously help um, you not concede or score more goals depending on who you are up against obviously so uh, yeah well done to Sheffield United now let's go to France PSG Strasbourg how have they done all right first and second obviously we all know PSG are going to come first people write on there saying there's no point doing PSG there is a point to do PSG because PSG just let you know how good the tactic can be end of the day Strasbourg are a mid-table team and uh coming second awesome 82 points for them so top three Zen and Mbappe and Icardi the two strikers obviously for PSG even though Mbappe played quite a lot of games on that right hand side um 32 goals and 29 average rating Neymar and Mbappe 7.8 7.4 assists you've got uh Neymar and yeah <laughs> we've got another name guys is that Sanjin I'm gonna say Prisic am I right I don't know let me know I'm wrong. Ah, no, I'm wrong. All right. Someone actually wrote on my Twitter saying that they actually loved watching me because they have a fun time watching me pronounce players wrong. And uh, he finds joy in that. So thanks for that, Andrew. <laughs> um, so, yes, this film. Player of the matches, Neymar and clean sheets belongs to uh, Navas there. So competitions for PSG. They didn't win the Champions Cup, went out against Bayern Munich in the quarterfinals. But they did win the French Cup in the final against Nice there. 10-4. 10-4. Oh, it's one of them, isn't it? One of them games. And uh, Trophies as Champions, they were also the winner there, beating uh, Marseille 4-0. Um, let's have a look at the squad. How did the squad do? A lot of players there getting some decent ratings. Neymar being the best player, getting 23 goals and 29 assists. My man. Um, biggest goal scorers, Icardi and Mbappe, Neymar, and then Moise Keane. Obviously, 20, 23, 45, and Icardi getting 51 goals in all competitions. Biggest creators after Neymar, you got Di Maria, Mbappe, Icardi, Bernat and Keane. All right, and then Verratti as well, all getting double digits. Team report, absolute domination, which it should be. End of the day, you are PSG. Um, expected goals, 3.02. You're scoring a lot, 3.53 on the averages. You're conceding less than a goal a game. Uh, shots per game, 21.53. All right, so yeah, just you've just PSG'd the whole league, basically. Um, and then if we go to the full numbers, 201, there we go. That's what we look for with elite teams. Elite teams, you really expect when it's a good tactic, you want to score more than 200. And when I say elite teams, there's not really a lot of elite teams in the world or in Football Manager 21, in my opinion. PSG, one of them. All right, Liverpool is another one as well. And obviously, if you think there's other ones, let me know in the comments, guys. And uh, I might start testing them just to see what, what that like, what's that like as well. Obviously, you got Barcelona, but I don't know. I don't know. I prefer PSG. Um, so 201 goals for them anyway. Absolutely incredible. Only 50 conceded. A little bit on the high side again, but don't forget, it is a pretty attacking tactic. So you can forgive them for conceding quite a little bit every now and again. But still... It's not too bad. I've definitely seen a lot better. Um, but let's have a look at uh, Strasbourg then. They were the underdogs. Uh, well, middle team, really. Mid to low team. I think they're, what well, they predicted, 11. Yeah, so middish to low team uh, with Strasbourg. And to finish second, incredible. Incredible. Competitions then. Um, tenth round obviously got knocked out by PSG. Okay. Um, so we go to the squad then. Out of the squad. Do, so that's pretty good. For the underdogs, that's pretty good. Average ratings. Uh, Kawashima. I'm not going to count him. He only played one game. So it's Diallo then. 27 goals, 7 assists. Was your best player? 7.13. Uh, most goals scored after Diallo was a, a York. I might be right. I don't know. 
I think I've come across that player quite a few times as well. And someone's probably wrote in the comments at one point, you pronounce it like that. I'm like, yeah, I'll remember for the next time, but I don't remember for the next time. Um, so yeah, two high scorers there. Biggest creators in your team is, yeah, that Prisic. I'm going to say Prisic. Um, and then obviously Ludovic. I'll just call him Ludovic. Ludovic. 12 assists and Thomason 11. Team report for the underdogs or for the mid to low team. That's amazing. All right, you are finishing above the averages in every category except pass completion ratio, but that could just be down to you playing too fast. It would be nice to slow it down, connect the passes, uh, so on and so forth. So you're doing pretty well. Uh, analyst report, full numbers, 92 goals. Would have been nice to break into the hundreds. It would have been nice to go a little bit more. Actually, you're a mid-table team. It's not like you're a low, low team. Um, and 55 goals uh, conceded, which is actually pretty good. Oh, that's pretty good. So let's go to Spain now, Barcelona and Vigo. Let's see how they have done. And then we'll go through all of, obviously, the league's standings when it comes to everyone else. Um, Barcelona first, all right? They're a great team. Obviously, they're going to be predicted first quite a lot of the times. And um, yeah, so well done to them. But Vigo, Vigo are pretty much like Strasbourg. They are, they are the mid to low team, all right? Ranked 12th um, or predicted 12th. And they've got European football. So nice one to them. Uh, top three players, you've got Griezmann, Messi and Mina. Obviously, all strikers for both teams. 29, 26 and 26 goals. Uh, average rating on Messi was your best player, 7.71. Assists was Messi and Nolito, uh, 17 and 16. Player of the matches belongs to Messi with 10. And then if we go to the competitions then. So, Barcelona won the Spanish Cup and the Spanish Super Cup. In the Spanish Cup, the... Uh, uh, Atletico Bilbao um, for one, and then the Spanish Super Cup, obviously against Real Madrid at one nil. Uh, Champions Cup, unfortunately, got knocked out by Real Madrid there in the quarter final. So it's not. It's looking like none of the big teams won any of the Champions League uh, competitions, but it's not not too bad. Still got the treble, guys. Still got the treble. Um, squad then had that surprising. That's not a lot of players getting a decent average rating for the team that you are. All right, only six. Normally, with top teams, you get a lot more than that. But uh, yeah, okay. Messi was obviously your best player, getting 35 goals, 22 assists. Biggest goal scorers, Griezmann, Messi, Fati, and Dembele. All right, 11, 22, 35, and 43. Biggest creators in your team, Messi, Pjanic, and uh, Pedri with Dembele there, 10, 11, 16, and 22. Team report then. All right, you conceded more than I thought you would. Obviously, for who you are and what league you're in, uh, conceded per game 1.32. For an elite team, you're normally aiming less than a goal per game, basically. Um, sh uh, shots per game, 18.32. And goals, obviously, are very high there. Uh, analyst report, the full numbers, 160 goals and 71 conceded. So, yeah, not. I don't think that's the greatest, to be fair, for Barcelona. Um, obviously, he came first. It done its job, but I don't think it's... I don't think it's just there. I don't think it's there for him. Maybe, obviously, the assistant manager wasn't playing Messi in the correct positions. If it was me, I'd play Messi up front. I, he just scores goals at the end of the day, and you set him for every single set piece going. You set him for all the penalties. You're getting all those, all those goals. Um, but, yeah, maybe it just might be a little bit of player rotation. Just put him in different positions. You might have scored quite a lot more. Um, so let's go to uh, Vigo then. Obviously, they're the mid-table to underdog teams. Um, did pretty well, all right? European qualification is nothing to moan about with Vigo. Uh, coming sixth as well, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, and you got a couple of players in the top threes as well. So how did they do in the competitions? Third round, obviously got knocked out in the Spanish Cup there. If we go straight to your squad. See, the underdogs or the mid-table team actually performed better when it, in terms of average rating. Um, with this tactic so that just shows you it might not actually be suited for Barcelona at the end of the day um, even though they did well and then uh, your best player then was Aaron Martin one goal 16 assists played 7.21 obviously not going to count Costas because he only played two games biggest goal scorers is Mina Aspas all right and Nolito uh, 29 28 and 16 biggest creators Nolito Martin Mendes Aspas all right, 14, 15, 16, and 18 there. Team report, that's not too bad for the mid-table teams. All right, you're nearly on the top end of the averages when it comes to conceding. Uh, still doing very well on the goals per game. Expected goals and shots all the same. Um, stats then, 117 goals. So that's more like it. That's actually pretty good. Uh, and goals conceded is only 63 as well. So well done to Vigo there. They did very 
very well indeed. So let's have a look at the head, the head, not the head to heads, but the um, the full stats compared to the rest of the league. So we'll start off obviously in Spain because we're there. So stats, team detail. Then let's go to attack, and then so goals. First place and second place both belong to Barcelona and Vigo. That's absolutely amazing. Obviously, Barcelona expected quite a lot of the times, but Vigo to be there. Second place above Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid. Absolutely incredible. Obviously, goals per game is going to be the same. Expected goals for first and second. Across completion, goals from corners then. Vigo came first with 12. They scored 12 goals from corners. Uh, Barcelona coming second. A direct free kick, that's obviously down to your players, but Vigo was second there. Indirect, you got uh, Barcelona and Vigo, uh, joint third, pass completion ratio, clear cut chances then, first and second again, Barcelona and Vigo, guys. Uh, fouls made, conceded, let's have a look. So we're a little bit lower there with Barcelona 11th and Vigo are 15th. At least they're not the worst, but it's not great, especially for Barcelona. Um, expected goals against, right? So again, it's not. It's not the worst, but it's not the best, all right? You always expect Barcelona to be right down at the bottom 20th. You don't want to be expected goals against someone like Barcelona. They should be there with Real Madrid and, and Atletico Madrid. Vigo, I think that's pretty fair, all right? You're pretty much bang on in the middle. Uh, conceded from corners, how are we done there? So Barcelona, not too bad. Only conceded two goals from corners with Vigo joint seventh with four. So, uh, yeah. I don't think that's too bad. I think they've done uh, very well indeed. So let's go to uh, PSG, obviously France. Let's have a look at their uh, league and the head-to-heads there, all the team details. Um, so attacking again, goals then. So once again, PSG and Strasbourg coming first and second compared to everyone else in the league. Uh, goals per game would be first and second. Expected goals again, first and second. Uh, penalties taken, cross completed. Cr uh, goals from corners. So the underdog, once again, just like Vigo, scored more goals on corners. So Strasbourg with 14, PSG with 12 there, first and second, which is, is still in its own amazing at the end of the day so nice set pieces um goals from free kicks uh yeah psg pretty low down i would have thought they would have been a bit higher strasbourg not too bad joint seventh uh, goals from indirect passes clear cut chances first and second psg in strasbourg shots on target not doing too bad again psg in strasbourg um fouls against conceded let's have a look so psg very good 33 conceded obviously monaco actually getting 32 coming first so in a way 32 is low but again with who you are, you would always expect uh, PSG to be first when it comes to not conceding a lot of goals whatsoever. But Strasbourg did all right there with seventh, I think. Um, expected goals against. So, yeah, right down here. So, PSG are expected to concede very little. And, unfortunately, it was Monaco that just edged them out when it was the actual conceded. Uh, Strasbourg 13th there. So, they were pre only predicted 48 goals, which is not too bad. Um, conceded from corners, not too fussed about that. Fouls made, tackles won, clearances, interceptions, no, not too fussed about them. Let's go to the Premier League and how did they do on the uh, detailed team? Uh, so back to attacking goals then. Arsenal coming first with 113. Chef United fourth. Not bad for Chef United. Uh, goals per game it would be the same. First and fourth. Expected goals first and fourth. Um, crosses completed. Goals from corners. Here we go. So not like the other leagues. All right. Arsenal was second with 11 goals from corners with Chef United. Um, coming fifth there with nine uh, goals from direct free kicks obviously that can be just from your players but uh, Arsenal coming fifth and Sheffield coming joint eighth um, goals from indirect free kicks shots on target uh, Arsenal first Sheffield United fifth shots on target ratio conversion rate first and second obviously would be pretty similar to a goal score because it's all down on the same math and then if we go to a conceding look we've got uh, Arsenal there uh, only conceding 36 goals in the uh, Premier League, which ain't too bad. Uh, Sheffield United, pretty low down, kind of expected um, to be joint 16th there. They conceded quite a lot. Would have been nice to be a little bit high, because look at Fulham there. Even they only conceded 59, uh, Brighton 52. Um, expected goals against, yeah. Arsenal's going to be pretty low down. I think that's pretty fair. You only conceded 45 and you conceded less than that, which is uh, pretty good. And um, and Sheffield United are going to be high up because of who they are at the end of the day. Um, so, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Pretty good indeed. Now, we uh, obviously had a couple of the lower lower teams in the lower leagues of uh, English football. So, Blackburn, how did they do? Uh, finished second, which ain't too bad. That's actually pretty good. With Armstrong scoring 50 league goals. The pace is insane. 18-17, uh, obviously, acceleration in pace. 54 goals in all competitions. Well done to Blackburn for getting promoted. Let's drop down a league to Fleetwood. All right, League 1. That's a shame. They came seventh, obviously. The predicted seventh came seventh. So no improvement, but did pretty well when it 
comes to scoring goals, obviously Madden coming first there, Mulgrew um, coming third on the average ratings, and then drop down another league to uh, League Two with Port Vale. That's a shame they went out in the playoffs. A predicted eighth came fourth, so there's an improvement there. And if you have a look at the playoffs, they got all the way to the final, lost out to Newport County two one, but you did get a couple of players once again in the top threes. So uh, well done to them. So yeah, that's the tactic, guys. The crazy four four two upgrade by Crompton FM. Obviously, it must be an upgrade or a tweak from an original nap tactic that's what it looks like so obviously congratulations to both of them uh, great tactic guys obviously if you like your 4-2-4s or your four four twos, whichever way you look at it this is my personal favorite um, role purely because it's a fantastic attacking tactic and if you just want to bulk up your midfield you can always drop down one um one striker down into the attacking central role or just again and have three in the middle they are my preferred three formations if you ever wanted to know and uh yeah have fun with that hopefully it works for you hopefully you subscribe to the channel comment and like the video as well guys and i'll be back for more at another time i'm tucker job see you later bye